Hello friends. This lecture is a part of an enemy ICT project funded by Ministry of Human Resource Development, Government of India. The lecture is on aseptic operation and containment. An organism or many time more than one type of organisms are used to produce a particular type of fermentation product. Following are consequences which occurs if the fermentation process is contaminated at any stage with an unwanted microorganism or microorganisms. These are competition for nutrients amongst organisms, con con contaminants may outgrow the real product producing organisms the contaminants may contaminate the final product production of some unnecessary metabolite by the contaminants and degradation of the desired product now how to avoid the entry of contaminant in any fermentation process we can avoid the entry of contaminant in fermenter by using a sterile inoculum before starting a fermentation process by sterilizing the medium and other medium component to be added during the process properly by sterilizing the fermenter vessel and other ancillary equipments and keeping aseptic condition throughout the fermentation process now contaminant in the fermentation industry is also increase the overall cost of fermentation process. We know that protection against contamination can be achieved by aseptic operation during the process. East et al. in 1984 and Flicklinger and Sanson in 1984 has initiated containment guidelines for a particular type of organisms an appropriate level of containment should be established. An entire process must be carefully accessed. If recombinant organism is used, an appropriate assessment procedure must be established and based on hazard assessment, an organisms can be categorized under a particular hazard group and an appropriate level of containment is shown in figure A. Brinkler and Park in 1992 has described the details of assessment of risk at various stage and different ways to reduce it. Following figure shows a classification of a microorganisms to be used in process and designation of its suitable level of containment and research or industrial site within the European Federation of uh, Biotechnology. You can see from the figure that process organisms can broadly classified under two categories that is non-genetically engineered organisms and genetically engineered organisms. When we use non-genetically engineered organisms again we allocate these groups under hazardous group allocation. These are four this type of group that is hazardous group 1, 2, 3 and 4. These all four groups further categorize based on that containment level as GILSV means good industrial large scale practice then 2, 3 and 4. Likewise when we use genetically engineered organisms it can be categorized under two further subcategories these are harmless group 1 and potentially harmful group 2. If it is harmless group 1 then can be again categorized under small scale and large scale processes. And large scale processes can have B and again B1 GILSP group. Likewise potentially hazardous group 2 again can be categorized under two categories small scale and large scale. And large scale again have three subcategories that is B2, B3 and 
before. Now, general containment. If you see, there are lot of containment requirement applied to any biotechnological operations once the organisms has been categorized under hazardous group as described by Frommer et al. in 1989. And these groups are written instruction and code of practice, biosafety manual, good occupational hygiene, good microbiological techniques, biohazard sign, restricted access, accidental reporting, and medical surveillance. Now, primary containment. Work with viable microorganisms should take place in closed system with minimum or prevent the release of cultivated microorganisms. Now, treatment of exhaust air or gas from closed system and sampling from closed system. Addition of material to closed system and transfer of cultivated cells. Removal of material, products and effluent from the cloth system. Penetration of cloth system by agitator, soft or measuring devices and form out control. Secondary containment. Secondary containment include protective clothing appropriate to the risk category, changing and washing facility, disinfection facility, emergency shower facility, airlock and compulsory shower facility, effluents decontaminated, controlled negative pressure, HEPA filter in air duct, tank for spilled fluid and hermetically sellable area. Overall contaminant categorization can be as below to accomplish the standard of the precise level of containment. These are procedure to be used, staff training, the facility in the laboratory and factory, downstream processing, effluence treatment, work practice and maintenance. It is imperative to ensure that all these aspects are of a sufficiently high standard to achieve the required level of containment essential for a particular process by a government regulatory body. Unless and until these criteria are not met as per the standard, one should not operate the process. Thank you very much.